Tonight, Microsoft's Build Conference wraps up, Twitter's 15 new ad products, and Samsung's graphene breakthrough. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 59 for Friday, April 4th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code TN20. I am Jason Howell, and tonight I'd like to start off by welcoming Mary Jo Foley to the show live and in person in the studio here. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Yeah, I think you're the maybe the first person in studio for TN2, wow. so... You know, you're going down in the record books for that. An honor. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, uh, Mary Jo is here because, she, you know, she's in the studio. She just capped off an entire week at Microsoft's Build Conference in San Francisco. Minutes ago, you wrapped up an epic episode of Windows <laughs> Weekly. I'm sure you're exhausted at this point. It's been a long week for you, right? It's been long, but really great. I love Build. Build's one of my favorite Microsoft shows. Excellent. Well, it's so great to have you up here. Let's um just kind of start off with, you know, if you had to name three things from the Build Conference that really stood out for you, what would those be? Hmm. Um, I think first and foremost uh, was the introduction of Cortana, mm -hmm. which is Microsoft's Siri, Google Now kind of competitor. Mm -hmm. So that that was a huge one. Um, th that's going to be built into Windows Phone 8.1. And Microsoft Demo did it at the conference. And it actually looks pretty good for a beta. Yeah. It actually worked. Yeah. So, Surprise. you know, I've seen a lot of articles, you know, saying mm -hmm. the Siri killer, the Google right. Now killer, whatever. Yeah. Is it that or is it in a category all its own if it lives up to its potential? You know, I, I feel like it's almost as though Microsoft took the best of Siri and the best of Google Now and tried to combine them and build something. Mm -hmm. And so it's um, it's it's similar to these things. You know, you can set notifications, you can set alarms, uh, you you can do all the same kind of things that you can with Google Now and Siri. But mm -hmm. just because it's Bing powered and that's part of the Microsoft of ecosystem, course. I think it makes it a little bit different. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and now if you had to pick the second thing, would, would that be what, Windows 8.1, I would guess? It would. Okay. It would. Um, so Windows 8.1 also debuted this week, and it's starting to roll out to, to uh, people who have Windows 8.1 mm -hmm. as of this week. Mm -hmm. And what's really great about it, I've, I've not been a gigantic Windows 8 fan, even though I'm a Microsoft reporter, sure. but this brings mouse and keyboard use into alignment with Windows 8. So they added a lot of little touches, like you can close apps using the little X in the corner, like you can now with Windows. Right. Um, you can have a taskbar that goes across your modern apps and your desktop apps so that you don't feel this jarring experience when you shift between the two. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of little niceties that make it less scary and less unfamiliar, I think. To the average consumer. Right, I mean, the there, there have been things with Windows 8 that right. certainly have turned people away from what right. maybe what they're used to. Do you think this, the, some of these changes are enough to kind of pull them back in? I think it's a good start to that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think now if you're somebody who's been a Windows XP or a Windows 7 user and you see this, you're mm -hmm. not... You're not going to say, wow, what is that? I've never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. You'll see little familiar things that'll make you feel at least somewhat comfortable. Sure. Okay. Uh, and, you know, consumers are probably going to like this next one, I, I imagine anyways. Microsoft announcing that they will be making Windows free for a certain set of users anyways. Right. What's the details with that? Yeah, this this is, was a big surprise to a lot of people. Even though there have been some rumors about this, sure. um, Microsoft is making Windows free for all of Windows Phone plus uh, tablet and other kinds of devices of nine inch screen sizes and smaller. Mm -hmm. So now you can see Microsoft very serious about competing with Google. Absolutely. That's um, this is target like, right yep, there. Google, uh, we're going right after you in your wheelhouse. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think this is a, an inevitable move, but also kind of surprising when you think about Microsoft's heritage. I mean, they make <laughs> totally. a ton of money by selling Windows licenses to OEMs. Yeah. So now they're going to change that up and, and try to make money off services instead of off of um, Windows itself. Well, I mean, and Microsoft's been around for so long, and so has Windows. I mean, exactly. the tech landscape changes so rapidly. It's kind of interesting that it's lasted as long as it has before they've had to make such a drastic change in that regard. It so. is. It totally is. And oh. do you think this is going to be a good thing? Do you think this is going to kind of yeah. help them change a little bit of their mobile tide, I guess? I do. I do. I think yeah. it's going to, I think it's going to bring more partners into the whole ecosystem. So I think we'll see more vendors maybe start selling and making Windows phones and hopefully some more tablet makers doing some Windows tablets. 
Awesome. Well, Mary Jo, I know that you're exhausted <laughs> and it's time for you to get to your weekend. Enjoy the Bay Area while you're here. Thanks. You've extended your stay and so you're going to enjoy the sights and, and everything in San Francisco. Uh, of course, if you want to hear more of Mary Jo's kind of coverage of Build, you can check out the Windows Weekly that recorded literally minutes before <laughs> we got started with Tech News tonight. Also, Paul Therott, as well as a few other folks, Leo, of course, uh, their unabbreviated, unabbreviated take of Microsoft Build 2014. And where, can, where else can people find you online? Uh, people can also find me uh, on at Mary Jo Foley on Twitter, Excellent. as well as allaboutmicrosoft.com. Right on. Mary Jo, thank you for coming onto the show. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Thanks. Right on. All right. Uh, before we continue, I just want to tell you that this episode is actually brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that works with almost any internet connection. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes back and forth. Any application works with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing programs. They all work with ProXPN. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes, uh, disguising your physical location and giving you unfettered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or travel to. Complete online privacy through a 512-bit encryption tunnel. Works via OpenVPN or PPTP, you choose. You can protect yourself against your ISP's six strikes rule, keep your personal internet usage private at work, bypass geographical restrictions for internet content, and online video with worldwide servers in the US, UK, Asia, and even more. ProXPN also works with your iOS or Android device. Steve Gibson actually gave it a great review on Security Now. So ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.98 a month or $74.95 for an entire year, We've got a special offer. Use the code TN20 to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That's only $5 per month on a yearly plan. If you're not satisfied, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. Go to proxpn.com slash twit and sign up with the code TN20. That's TN20. ProXPN accepts payments through Visa, PayPal, and Bitcoin as well. Thank you, ProXPN, for all of your support. All right, now to the tech feed. First up, Twitter has announced it will debut 15 types of new ad products and improved ways to target users over the next six months, sources tell the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the first is rumored to be a product that will encourage users to download apps through Twitter and may arrive in the next few weeks. Twitter's current suite of ad products, ads that target select users and receive preferential placements as tweets, trends, and recommended accounts, they don't appeal to mobile game and e-commerce companies who buy apps on app downloads, uh, subscribers, signups, and purchases. Twitter's advertising revenue more than doubled in the fourth quarter to $219.6 million from the same period a year earlier. But the company has yet to turn a profit. Twitter has also tested a call-to-click button that would put users on the phone with businesses and has been in talks with payments processor Stripe to help allow users to purchase goods directly through Twitter. And in more Twitter news, although a little bit lighter this week, the company updated its web client to display emoji along with text in your next tweet, putting web, web Twitter on par with Twitter's mobile apps. So get to emoji-ing. Uh, in a step toward creating flexible displays for future mobile devices, scientists at Samsung's Advanced Institute of Technology and Sung Kyung Kwan University say they've been able to synthesize a crystal of graphene, which the company says is ideal for consumer electronics. Samsung says the material is more durable than steel and has 100 times greater electron mobility than silicon, making it ideal for flexible screens, smartphones, watches, and other wearables. The results will be published in Science Magazine and Science Express and could help Samsung widen its range of flexible gadgets. Really cool stuff there. Earlier this week, Amazon launched its Fire TV media streaming set-top box that we all heard about. And today, the retail giant is announcing Amazon Dash. It's a Wi-Fi-enabled barcode scanner designed for use with Amazon Fresh Grocery Service. As you run out of items in your kitchen or pantry, you begin to scan cans, bottles, and boxes that you'll need restocked. If you can't scan something, Amazon Dash also supports voice input on a built-in microphone button, and the item will be added to your online shopping basket. Amazon Fresh is currently only available in Southern California, San Francisco, and Seattle, while Amazon tests market feedback before a larger rollout. The device is free, and you can request an invite at fresh.amazon.com slash dash. And finally, Google's push to trademark the term glass has hit a snag. According to the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office said not so fast. The company already earned approval for Google Glass, but last fall the Trademark Office argued that simply 
glass would lead to consumer confusion, and that term was merely descriptive. Google's not given up. They've responded with a nearly 2,000-page letter outlining that due to news coverage, consumer confusion was unlikely. If they don't win this time, Google is free to call their, project, their product glass, but the term would not be protected from trademark infringement. That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at tn2 at twit.tv. Do not miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. That's every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. That's it for tonight. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.